What we want to do here is to install a domain controller in an existing forest as a child domain. The objective here, install an a install Active Directory as a child domain, the ordway.prv uh, forest, the ordway.prv domain. What do I need to know? I need to know where the SRV records, the service records are, so that in this case I can find the domain controller, global catalog, lots of other records that are stored in DNS. I know that that these records are on the server that hosts the ordway.prv domain. So I need its IP address and I'm going to use the 192.168.5.5 address which is one of its. It's set up as a router right now also. So what I need to do is configure my server's NIC to use the DNS for that server. And I also am going to need a map to an I386 folder or a CD that has the, has the files in it that I'll need to install DNS. Before we get started, let's take a look on the root server. When I talk about service records, if you go into DNS, if Active Directory is properly installed, you're going to get things like the MS Microsoft Domain Controllers, Hardway.prv. So I'm going to get Domain Controllers, and under the Domain Controllers, I have sites of which there is only one, and then TCP. Kerberos and LDAP. Kerberos is going to authenticate me. LDAP is where the uh, database is for Active Directory. The Active Directory database is an LDAP database. It's got domains, global catalogs, PDCs, all sorts of things as we look down in there. But these records are absolutely critical in order to be able to use Active Directory. If DNS doesn't work, Active Directory doesn't work. Okay, we're back on the uh, demo uh, d or server right now. I have renamed it to the computer name demo using NuSID. If you do not rename your computer using NuSID when you try to join Active Directory, since it uses the security identifier, the SID, it'll tell you that it already exists ask you if you want to make modifications and you can say whatever you want to it's not going to make any changes so in our environment the first thing that you need to do is rename your server in accordance with the naming convention using the new SID which should be on the C drive of your computer I've set an address here 192.168.5.25 and have set the DNS to 192.168.5.5 which is the IP address of the root server. We can look at that to be sure that it is 192.168.5.5 so I should be able to get the resource records that I need from there in order to install Active Directory. The other thing that you'll need to do is to map a drive start run backslash backslash 10.60.66.253 right click on the i386 and map a drive map a drive to the i386 folder so that you'll be able to install DNS when Active Directory requests it. Now to get started install an Active Directory start run DC promo which should bring up the screen next general operating systems compatibility what is and isn't compatible what we're going to now start to paint attention here the domain controller type we're going to and we are going to create a domain controller for a new domain the next screen is going to be a little bit different from a new forest when you install your second domain controller in your domain you're going to configure an additional domain controller for an existing domain so we're going to do first a domain controller for a new domain and in this case we have the options of domain in a new forest, child domain in an existing domain tree, or domain tree in an existing forest. We're going to pick child domain in an existing domain tree. If we wanted to create a new forest starting from scratch as I did with root it would be a domain in a new forest but we're going to use the existing forest, the existing tree and create child domains. So the username here is going to be administrator password password capital P password one and the domain is ordway.prv probably going to need 
the entire fully qualified domain name if you just use Ordway remember it's going to be trying to resolve NetBIOS names which won't work across a router. And when you spell it right, I went back and corrected Orway to Ordway, it found the domain controller. So we're going to create it within the Ordway.prv. Reston is already done, but he's finished. We'll, we're going to, within this thing, and let's call it, we'll call it something really clever like Child1, because I'm going to take it out as soon as I get the demo done. Right now it's checking to see if that NetBIOS name already exists and if it does then it will give me a suggestion here that I can either take or rename it. I normally just take the defaults here as we go through this thing unless you really want to confuse it. Permissions compatible with only with, only with Windows 2000 or Windows 2003 operating systems. That's what we need because we only have op 2003 operating systems in our domain. If we had in T4 systems we would need uh, permissions compatible with the pre Windows 2000 operating system. The restore mode password you have to have one in here and I'm just going to use password one and that is if you have to re recover from a uh, total failure and use the Active Directory restore mode. I'm going to pause while it's doing all of the writing here. Okay, Active Directory is installed. The reboot has taken place. So when we try to log into this thing, got to click into it, obviously. We now have in the options the ability to log into the child1 domain, the Ordway domain, or the Reston domain. Ours is child1. We're going to log into there. We'd have to have the credentials and obviously you know the credentials because we're using the same for all of the domains in order to log into those things. And when we get in, while, while it is getting started, because it obviously takes a couple minutes with the new domain, let's go back to the root domain. If I look in to DNS, it now has the child1 domain along with the rest of the domain which is already installed listed. listed. So it now shows all of the it now shows where all of the that it has all of the records that are required for Active Directory to work in this child domain as long as my server is pointed here. What we'll have to do once it's installed is to reconfigure DNS to host the records on the on the uh, domain controllers in the sites where the servers are located and we'll do that as a separate issue but we do have the records here that are listed sites MS CDS domain controllers TCP if we go into here all of them are on demo child1.ordway.prv so the records are listed they're on they're hosted on the the DNS server that's running on the root server if i go into active directory users and computers it defaults to the ordway.prv but I can go in here and right click connect to a domain and go into browse and from the root I can then connect to any of the child domains as long as I can resolve the DNS records of course and then we look in the domain controllers here and demo is there back to demo it's restarted so it is now a domain controller in a child domain, the child domain child1.ordway.prv and if we start its Active Directory users and computers we should find that it is listed child1.ordway.prv the records that are in this domain will be hosted on the LDAP server that runs on this machine. You do need DNS in order to be able to find the services and that's what the SRV records are about. Configuring DNS on these again is a separate issue. We'll have to, to uh, be sure the DNS is here. If the domain's not 
uh, didn't get installed when we installed Active Directory, then we just go simply go back and create that domain as an Active Directory integrated zone. Point it to itself in order to resolve records in its own domain, and then we'll have to resolve uh, resources outside of the of the domain. We'll discuss those separately, but that that is the steps that are required in order to install a uh, child domain. Uh, thank you for watching, and hope this has been useful. Thank you.